In this study, Mrat hopes to explain how God set out his creation and programmed it to improve and develop through time. After the planet Earth was ready to host life, God wanted his chosen creatures to live in the best possible conditions on it. He put forward the algorithm of evolutional life, with if and then. And when he felt that human beings needed more intelligence to rule the marvelous planet wisely, he had to intervene to alter and modify their brains and some of their internal code, which we know today as DNA. Since God has such vast knowledge of designing, creating, connecting and communicating, Mrad finds that the best way to describe this theory is to focus on God's programming ability. The process of evolutionary creation functions like a computer programmer inventing a visual software, he has to set its codes, and then program it with if, then and all the other keywords that would allow users of the program to create many things, from video games and animation to hacking, so it can be used for good or bad, depending on their motives. Some users can also become programmers, and try to add useful new things to the original program. So the evolutionary process of humanity progresses with time, from one intelligent creature to another. And at each human life cycle, humanity or human civilization grows and gains experience, exactly like a newborn baby that matures and then dies, gets destroyed, if it hasn't reached its potential for justice, wisdom and peace. If we look around us, each continent has its own weather, its own specific species of animals and plants, and even different human bodies and skin colors. And whatever Mrad writes, he is not going to compete with Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection, because he studied well and carefully most of the species we have on this planet. Yet the point that the followers of Darwin's theory focused on most in order to prove their theory of evolution is that the diversity of species on the planet could only have happened through evolution. Mrad argues that this is partly, but not entirely true. The main families of species were indeed created by the one and only creator, but with the ability to mix and evolve. The canine family, for example, is a very large group that was able to diversify into wolves foxes etc. depending on the environment in which they found themselves. They evolve and differ from each other and mix with each other, but they don't, and never will, evolve from a different family of species. And when a major step in the evolution of a specific family takes place, then their physical code must alter, and such an alteration will not happen accidentally, but through an intervention. Mrad is 100% positive that if DNA had been discovered before Darwin's death, he would have changed his mind and altered his theory from an absolute evolution to a partial one. Today, many evolutionists rely on finding similarities between fish and other creatures, including humans, claiming that we are all descendants of the fish. To see an example of their arguments in this direction, use Google. They are missing the point once again, and fail to see that if such resemblances prove anything, it is that all creatures, are made by one and only creator using a specific mechanism. These people don't know that fishes were the first earthly creatures made by God. Yes, we and many animals do indeed look almost the same while being formed in the womb, because he applied a similar mechanism in all his creatures so that their bodies start to form in the same way, and then differ at later stages. But that doesn't mean we evolved from fish. Any manufacturer in the world today has a trademark and a special way of making his products, so that if a fashion expert sees a newly designed dress, they can instantly recognize the touch of its designer, be it Ali Saab or Giorgio Armani. The same is true of a car, if you see one, you will recognize the maker. Firms such as Mitsubishi or Mercedes will manufacture a range of vehicles, trucks, cars, buses and so on. They are built on the same basic mechanism and start from the same zero point, but in the end they are different products to be used for different tasks. It's clear that the bus did not evolve literally from the car. 
but the maker was inspired first to make the car and then decided that it was time to create other types of vehicle. To create a bus or a truck, he will use the same basic mechanism he used to build the car, but with many additional features that make them what they are. Evolutionists also argue about the similarity between diseases of humans and those of fish and other animals. And again, it's a proof that the designs were made by the same designer, and such things occur because most bodies have similar functional systems that connect the organs together. For example, we need to add water to both a car and a truck in order to maintain the temperature level of both vehicles, which will often face same type of problems. So what it looks like a natural selection doesn't come from nowhere. Instead, it follows the organogram that God has set for the planet. This organogram is connected and embedded in the DNA. Mred assumes we all know by now that mutations and changes occur in the DNA of every creature depending on the environment or the situation around him. If there is weather change in a specific region, its animals will adapt to survive the new circumstances, and what helps them to do so is the magical changes that occur in their DNA. If there is dirty water, then certain types of insect appear. There are many other examples, such as the way an animal changes color in order to become invisible to its enemies and protect itself from danger or adaptations in the form of birds beaks to suit the area in which they reside and the type of food they are consuming. These are small examples of how the natural organogram works. And so is the organogram set for each human being. If a man works in a job that requires a strong physical shape, his body is likely to adapt to his situation so that his muscles grow larger and faster, while his intelligence and ability to innovate grow smaller. The opposite happens to a researcher or scientist, whose work requires thinking and permanent use of the mind. He will be likely to have a very sharp intellect but in most cases will have no strong body. As we change, our bodies adapt to our life changes. The same thing applies to our sexual orientation, activities and lifestyle. A gay man is likely to be more sensitive than a straight man, and is likely to have a very soft heart that even some women do not possess. A boy born to a poor family is more likely to lead an innovative, successful life at a later stage, while a rich boy walks the opposite way down the hill because he will have a shallow personality as he hasn't needed to use his mind to improve his situation. That's why we see that life works like a wheel, a rich family can become poor in few decades, and vice versa. This program is within us, and it's our choices that take us one way or another. Indeed, there are some fates that are harsher than others, which is why parents should think many times before they decide to give birth to a child. If they are poor in a safe country, then it's okay for a child to be born. But if they are poor in a failed state with no hope in sight and they can't emigrate, then it would be better to not produce a child where they live, because they will bring him or her into a hostile environment in which he or she is unlikely to thrive. Evolution continues across the life cycles. This is clear in the sexual rules of each cycle. Originally men were allowed to marry their sisters, in the next cycle, as the population grew and spread, that was forbidden because many babies had been born handicapped or suffered other adverse consequences. Then, to combat the spread of diseases, God ordered children to be circumcised and forbade anal intercourse not only between men but also between men and their wives. Then, in the more recent period, he ordered us to have one partner at a time and to not jump from one bed to another. This has nothing to do with sinning, it has to do with our health and wealth concerns. Of course in old days people had to know also who were their children and the only way was to stick to one partner. Such cause is no longer needed today thanks to the DNA parenthood tests.
education is the key to solving the problems around us. Not only the human problems, we can also educate animals. We can train a tiger to be nice to other animals. And now, thanks to scientists, it becomes possible to produce lab-grown meat, so there will be no need in the future to kill animals anymore. We will also be able to feed predatory beasts so that they no longer need to hunt other creatures. It's our world, it's our kingdom. We are here to work our way out of the miserable mortal life to a peaceful immortal one. That's why we have to look after the balance set by God. Stop abusing nature, stop removing, destroying and flattening mountains, stop polluting the seas and forests. We are playing dirty games that will kill us and our children. Wake up, because it is all built into the if and then game. What goes around comes around. Briefly, we are not products of evolution. We are subjects of evolution. We were created, and we have a path of evolution that we should follow to reach our final goal, which is perfection and eternity. The evolution Mrad is speaking about is not only a physical evolution but also a moral spiritual, scientific and cultural evolution, in one word, a knowledge evolution. The more we become creative, innovative, righteous, just, knowing, wise, asexual, the more we become like God. The world is yet to answer this fundamental question. However, Mrad's imagination tells him that God started building the multiverse, billions of years ago. He was patient in his work as he created different forms of matter via chemical means, so there were gas, liquid and solid, and from them derived fire, water and metal. Then each series decomposed into several families. By mixing these materials, he made the planets one after another, as he had a bigger plan to create life on them and spread living creatures to be derived from different species. To control his creation, he had to give each a code connected directly to him, so that he could give his orders through that connection, and that's how everything went perfectly according to plan. In order to guarantee that the balance he had established could not be harmed in any way, he set an organogram that connected all entities, so that each planet moved in a known path and did not collide with any other, and so on.
As someone who is setting a plan, he had first to create the largest entities. After creating the galaxies and the planets and giving each of them different forms and characteristics to suit the inhabitants that were to be created at a later time, he started thinking of creating smaller creatures that would each dwell in its own world. Each world is formed of skies, a main planet, and its atmosphere. We assume that many of you have at some point in your lives played solitaire on their computers. Now the universe and its major components were ready, exactly like the cards at the bottom of God's screen. And then came the moment of the Big Bang, the moment when every created star and planet had to take its place in the complex universe as drawn by God. He clicked on the cards to start the game, and then each card went to its destined place. This click was exactly what we know as the Big Bang. And the God's particle could be the string with which the Master controls its puppet saw. To put it differently, it contains the code that God has put in place to keep his created universe under his sight. He then started creating creatures smaller than him in size and power. The first few were the ones to which we now give the name Archangels. They were created from a form of light different to the light of God, a ray less shining given the ability to shape shift and manifest itself in different physical forms, but they were not granted the power to add more knowledge to what he had already taught them. They were to follow orders, receive only the knowledge given to them by their creator and they were asked by intuition to be thankful and faithful to him. After these archangels, who were given tasks as close servants to God, he then created angels from a lower kind of light, jinn from fire, and many other creatures from different substances, and sent each tribe of them to a different planet. Some have multiple wings, some have two wings, some have no wings, but they have ability to fly, some live in different dimensions to others. Some are visible to some types while invisible to others.
After looking to all his creation, he found the existence around him boring, and realized that he needed some brilliant minds besides himself so that they could enjoy each other's capabilities. He decided that the time was right to create a new species which had the ability to reach a level of intelligence and creativity similar to his own. For such species to evolve, learn and prosper, he had to create a super home for them, a new planet not like others, a masterpiece of his creation in terms of atmosphere, nature and contents. He therefore created his new big creature called Earth secretly, away from the eyes of his other creatures, until he finished it by setting in motion the action of day and night through the movements of the sun and the moon. Then after he had finished building the wonderful planet, he made it visible to the other creatures yet inaccessible to many of them. Now the Earth became the wonder of the universe. The time came to test the function of its atmospheres. God decided to create new species that would be suitable to live on it. In the course of his tests, he created fierce animals, dinosaurs, and then great apes with some degree of intuitive intelligence. These apes were the first draft of us humans. After a while, he saw that such creatures were all right in terms of their body system's ability to function with water, meat, fruits and all the other things available to them. Yet he found them too large in size for the creature he intended to be the wonder among creatures, 